Hello and welcome to this first video in a series of programming videos on creating a chess engine in the C programming language. Before I get started with this video, which isn't going to contain any programming, it's just going to contain a quick look at the community and resources programming chess engines, or what I've found and use anyway, just want to make a small little disclaimer. I've, I've written in the past couple of years a chess engine for myself privately that plays reasonable chess and I said it's a project really just to practice some different things in programming and ended up becoming very involving and probably the most satisfying project programming I've ever done. Needless to say in this series because of the size of the project and the amount of work involved we'll be developing a relatively simple chess engine. It'll probably nevertheless be able to beat I would say 90 out of 100 people but it'll be relatively simple in, in terms of chess engine programming and it won't by any means be an example of how to program in C. For example, I'm not going to be splitting everything up very neatly into source and parent header files. There'll be one header file in the program containing all definitions, global variables, macros, etc, etc and a relatively thin spread of source files. Other things, will, Otherwise things will just become much too complicated for a video programming series will end up with a thousand videos or something. I'll be doing the program using the console, compiling using the console and writing the code in the notepad editor under Windows. Later on in the development of the engine we'll need to use a thread for the in-out and a thread for the thinking of the engine and because I'm doing it under Windows I'll be using the Windows threading in C. And yes, as I said, the simple aim of this is to allow somebody who's curious to follow the videos along and develop a program along with me, a relatively simple program that they can then expand upon later. I'm going to be explaining the concepts in a relatively detailed manner because I want this also to be a sort of part of, if you like, a not maybe beginning but intermediate programming course with C. Before we get started with the programming, let's have a little look at what we need or what we can use already online the chess programming community and I've already prepared with the browser here um, a various set of websites that you can already start looking at before we get into the actual programming ourselves. So as with everything on the internet these days there's a forum. Now quite, there are a few forums relating to computer chess but probably the best one that I tend to read now and again is something called talkchess.com um, if you just go in the browser to talkchess.com and put that in your browser then you'll be there and the good section is here it's the computer chess club programming and technical discussions and inside there are lots and lots of searchable good discussions on programming in chess and in the last couple of years it's been a, a good go-to place for sources of information the next website is something called chessprogramming.wikispaces.com and this is the chess programming wiki and this is an absolutely excellent resource which has helped me a huge amount in writing a chess engine. I'm not going into any detail now but you should really browse this. They've got something called the CPW engine which was written as an example engine with the code to be studied which is available here. There are lists of all the people involved in chess programming and a huge amount of other engines that have been written amateur and commercial engines here. Lots and lots of things to research and get started with chess programming. It's an excellent place to go. Inside this website you can search for someone called Bruce Moreland who wrote an engine called Gerbil and you'll come across the link that will lead you to this web archive address here which came from, from what I understand, uh, one of the earlier almost pioneers in chess programming, uh, Bruce Moreland, who wrote an open source program called Gerbil. And also he wrote, as you can see here, a very detailed description of how you go, out, go about programming a chess engine. And if I click on, say, Alpha B to search here, you can see that he gives also some example code with how each of the functions work as well as a long description of how things work. Now I'll be covering I think almost every single thing that's actually written in these articles here throughout these videos on a chess engine. But this is I found when I was starting out one of the best resources to explain actually how things work in a simple manner. 
Another place to go is to type Robert Hyatt into Google and you'll come up with this address here which is the address of Professor Robert Hyatt who is one of the pioneers of computer chess has a big history of uh, Professor Hyatt's work here in computer chess he's the author of a very very well known program Crafty he seems to have been going from what I can read here basically since the start in computer chess including having authored Cray Blitz the world computer chess champion from 83 to 89 and well there's a huge amount of information here and importantly he's also got a section where he's written some online technical papers which talk about representations in chess programs bitmaps hash collisions uh, some really really good stuff in there particularly when you get more, a bit more advanced the chess program and also his program crafty the source also is available for download although I've had a look at it and it's pretty complicated and advanced um, but it's well worth a look anyway another good place to go is computerchess.org.uk slash ccrl 4040 and this at the moment is one of the largest chess engine testing groups there's a large community of programmers programming chess engines I would say there's a couple of hundred in all throughout the world and I'm just scrolling them down here what's known as the rating list where the people who run this rating list are a set of dedicated people worldwide who test constantly new releases of chess engines playing in round robin tournaments against each other and then all these games are compiled together with lots of statistics and they're listed in a ratings list and they've also coloured them very conveniently here in the list as well so commercial is blue, free is green, open source is orange, private is black you can see at the moment the commercial engine Houdini is top of the list and a free engine is actually second in the list critter. Even more importantly an open source engine Stockfish is third in the list. Any of the engines that you have in this list you just need to click on the, the name and you get a link to the home page of that engine, the web page, and in the case of the open source engines, the orange ones, you can also find the code that you can download and have a look at yourself. Most of the engines are written in C or C++, there are a few in Java, C Sharp, a couple of other languages, but the majority of them are C based. Talking of Stockfish, the next place you can have a look is at the highest rated open source engine, stockfishchess.org. This is written, this engine is written in C. You can download and, as it says here, get involved in improving the engine. There's quite a large community involved around that. Um, I've had a look at the code for Stockfish. It, I'm not a C master, I think the guys who wrote this are. Uh, it's very very well written, very very well structured, pretty easy to understand but there's a reason why it's almost at the top of all of the chess engines rating list because it's very strong, it's very powerful, it's taken years to get there, it's a very large amount of code um, but well worth a look anyway but probably not the simplest thing to get started with. It is simple to get started with is TSCP or Tom Simple Chess Program and this is it tckerrigan.com forward slash chess forward slash tscp and Tom Kerrigan is also, some, also someone who is well known in the chess programming community because in 1997 he says here he wrote tscp which is a very small chess program with only a couple of thousand lines of code and is very very clear to read has some good comments inside and is a really good introduction uh, into how to get started I think in C with chess programming and the program we're writing in this video series is going to differ in quite a lot of ways from TSCP but certainly if I manage to achieve something even half as simple and as well written as Tom Kerrigan has achieved here then it will all be already be a massive achievement so I've had a, a good read through the code of this program and for the amount of code the program fails very strongly I can't really beat it um, but it's an, another excellent introduction into understanding the structure of a chess program. And last but not least, when we write our chess program, we'll be interfacing it with a GUI. Now, I like to use something called a Winboard GUI. If you go to this address here, or even if you just type into Google Winboard interface, you'll get a couple of links. One is to the GNU web pages to actually downloading Winboard, 
The other one is to the Windboard Forum, which is at this openorec.com forward slash windboard for outwb forum address. In the Windboard Forum, there's a forum called Windboard Development and Bug Fixing. And inside there, there's a permanently linked thread called Windboard 4.7 Downloads, or a locked thread at the top. And inside there, um, a man called uh, Harmgeet Muller, I think, from the Netherlands, who's the most active developer of Windboard, updates regularly this page with the latest Windows installer for Windboard GUI for playing chess. And I'm just scrolling down through here shows various pictures and things of his different modifications etc etc but it's a very very stable very fast very easy to use GUI however when we're developing we'll be using this GUI but we'll also be using another one called Arena and that's at the address of playwitharena.com Arena is a lot more heavy it's graphically nicer than Windboard it's a lot more heavyweight than Windboard though and as a result, when I'm running chess engines against each other, I prefer to use Wimboard. But Arena does have one advantage in our development of the chess engine at the start, and that is you can see the input and outputs, the communication between the interface and your chess engine, live scrolling on the screen. And particularly when we start implementing the protocol to communicate between the two, the GUI and the engine, it's very, very useful to have this live logging on the screen so you can see exactly what's going on, because often errors occur very quickly there. So that's really it for the introduction to sort of the chess programming world. One last thing I could look at very quickly is how do we actually communicate between our engine and the interface and we're going to use something called the UCI protocol which I didn't have a link prepared but I'll just put it in here and if I go into Google you can see there's already a link here to it and here's a description which you can also Google and read in your spare time of what you need to do to make your engine speak the UCI language. We don't need to really get into this at the moment because this will be coming much later on in the video series. Okay, that's it then for this video. I've shown some links of the main resources for the chess programming community. In the next video, we'll actually start with outlining, outlining how we're going to go about programming our chess engine. Thanks very much for watching. Comments, questions, welcomes always on YouTube.